the largest population of malnourished people, malnourished children, and as I'll shortly come to you, come to tell you, malnourished adults in the world. The highest population of malnourished people in the world lives in Sare Jahan Se Achha. But today I don't want to talk about children's malnutrition. I want to talk about adult malnutrition. There is an organization called the National Institute of Nutrition, which is run by the government. It's a government organization. They have a branch called the National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau, NNMB. Please put NNMB in your Google and press enter and you'll get all the data from which I'm quoting here. The National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau, NNMB. The National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau says that all, if you take the entire Indian population, 36% of the entire Indian population have a body mass index. Have you heard of body mass index? Are you people aware of body mass index? Yes? Yes. yes. So what is the minimum body mass index which is normal? Tell me, 18.5 is the body mass index which is regarded as the critical boundary between normality and subnormality. Okay? Is that okay? 36% of the Indian population have a body mass index below 18.5. If you disaggregate this figure, you find that there are large sections of the Indian population, Dalits, scheduled tribes, minorities in which more than 40% of the population, total population, have a body mass index below 18.5. That means they are living in a state of chronic endemic hunger. When they want to eat, when they feel hungry, they don't have food to eat in the house. That's what it means. 40% the World Health Organization says, the World Health Organization says that any population which has more than 40% of its members with a body mass index of below 18.5, that population should, be, that community or that population should be regarded as being in a state of famine. If you apply this criterion back to the NNMP data, what do we find? There are large sections of the Indian population which are living permanently in a state of famine. These people are able to survive, these communities are able to survive only because they have access to what are known as common property resources. What are common property resources? Resources that belong to everybody. Air. Do you have to pay a tax on air? I have to finish? Okay. Two minutes. Okay. Do we, on common property resources. Because we have access to common property resources. So these communities are able to survive. But when you remove their access to common property resources, which is what Sarva to do did, then these communities are living on the edge of destruction. They are brought to a state in which they are in the edge of destruction. This is not something new. It's new for India. It's not new for the world. The Western civilizations have been built 
on depriving indigenous populations of their common property resources and using them for their own purposes in order to create what is called development. That's why they are developed societies. We are undeveloped societies. They are developed societies because they rob the indigenous people of their geographical areas, of their access to common property resources and use those common property resources for their own development. But we have yet to do it. Now, unfortunately, these communities which are deprived of their access to common property resources, which are brought to a state in which their survival is at stake, they cannot be expected to acquiesce in their own destruction. They cannot be expected to say, okay, you want us to die, lie down and die, so we lie down and die. No. So they resist. They resist the acquisition of their resources. And now what we come to the second part of my argument, which is that the Indian state has developed a whole lot of judi judicial instrumentalities to suppress the resistance that indigenous populations offer when their common property resources are taken away from them. Sedition is one of those laws. There are many other laws about which my friends will tell you. My time is over. Please remember, it is the duty of every one of you to work towards a just and equitable society. Because that's the only way we can survive. It's not some high moral goal that I'm putting before you. If we have to survive, if we have to survive as communities, if we have to survive as a nation, if we have to survive as healthy communities, then we need to work towards for justice. Everybody needs to work for justice. It's not only lawyers who need to work for justice, or school teachers who need to work for justice. Everybody, if you're working in a company, if you're working in a firm, if you're an engineer, if you're a scientist, if you're a farmer, you need to be working for justice. If you're a housewife, you need to work for justice. Thank you very much.